playing with fate. Not a moment too late. So in the whole world, nothing can get me down. Ooh, ooh. Give me a break. Yeah, yeah. Give me a break. Cause I show me one. Give me a break. Yeah, yeah. I finally know where I belong. Give me a break. Yeah, yeah. But we got all this food poisoning over here. We'll take anybody, a crossing guard, a meter maid. <laughs> Chief, the Gloverdale police can't spare us nobody. Tell him I'm down to one healthy, able-bodied man. He's down to one healthy, able-bodied man. <laughs> Who's that, Chief? <laughs> you, you idiot. <laughs> I'm the healthy, able-bodied man he's down to. Bill, you gotta help me. The doctor says it's not serious, but every one of my men will be out for at least 24 hours. I called the sheriff's department, but they got their hands full right now. Yeah, an 18-wheeler turned over from Acme Farms at the Four Corners. The sheriff's guys are chasing chickens all over the highway. I should call Colonel Sanders? <laughs> That's not funny, Bill. That's not funny, Bill. <laughs> You wait till your department comes down with food poisoning. Have a nice day. <laughs> Ten men out sick. I tell you, Simpson, I should have been a doctor instead of a police chief. Well, chief, there's still time for you to be a doctor. What are you talking about? Well, let's see. You go, go to night school for pre-med, then transfer to day school, and then apply to med school. Then I then... could give you your lobotomy. <laughs> Can I get a deal on that, Chief? Chief, you have exactly two minutes to explain. Explain what? You have exactly two minutes to explain why your stupid officer Murphy pulled us over and said we better get our tails down to the station right now. Listen now. I am so sorry your two minutes are up. I mean, we are you out for... I'm me? sorry. We are out for even a cultural entertainment at the Green Line Musical Circus. Didn't Murphy explain that I'm in the middle of a crisis? No, he did not. He just made a strange gurgling sound, then he fainted. Oh, <gasps> fainted? Yes, then we took him to the hospital, and they said it was just a simple case of food poisoning. Now, what is your crisis? Almost the whole force is down with food poisoning. It is a crisis. That's why I need you girls to help me. Answer the phones and monitor the radio. And Miss Telly Savalas and the King and I? <laughs> oh, I seen it last week. Telly Savalas is swell. Shall we dance? <laughs> will you, will you, will you, will you shut up? <laughs> Who loves you, baby? <laughs> I'm really in a fix now. Look, Chief, I know you are, and we'll be glad to help you out. As soon as we see the King and I, Addie and I will come back over here, and we will answer the phones, we'll take messages... Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> OK. Until you get back, where's the rest of my family? Oh, let's well, see, the girls went out, and Joey and Grandpa went to the movies. You never can find a family when you need one. <laughs> he always gets cranky when he's hungry. Hey. Chief, now, we can exchange our tickets for tomorrow. Tomorrow night. I appreciate that now. OK, look, you're just a little tired, and you're a little hungry, and you're just a little bit cranky. So why don't we run over next door to the sub shop and get you something to eat, and then you'll feel much better. Thank you. Oh, wait, hold it. The sub shop is off limits until we find out what caused the food poisoning. Yeah, I got a sandwich right here that I'm not eating. What kind is it? Peanut butter and jelly. I'll take it. You know, the sub shop couldn't have caused the food poisoning because they've been closed all day. It's Monday. Well, it seems to me all you have to do is find out where the men got their food from. Yeah, then you'll find the source of the food poisoning. Yeah. Yes, you're a regular Angela Lansbury. <laughs> I solved the case, Chief. Everybody got lunch today from the takeout sandwich guy. You sure? Oh, yeah. That's where I got that peanut butter and jelly. Answer. 
answer the phone in. I don't know how to answer a phone in a police station. You're a PhD and you don't know how to answer the phone in the police station. I've never done this before. That's right. Well, it says right here in the police manual that you should pick up the phone and say, Glenlawn Police Department, good evening. Glenlawn Police Department, good evening. Now, what should I say now? Ask them why they call. What are you calling? Yeah. Hello? No, calm down, calm down. Yes. How might I help you? Oh, I'm sorry. We don't do cats in the tree. Well, call your fire, call your fire department. Okay, thank you. I feel like I've been on the force for years, girl. This is getting to be fun. Oh, Simpson, thank goodness you're back. Oh, yeah, hi, the Chief. Not bad. We got to the hospital, and, and he made one last lunge for my throat, and then he fainted. <laughs> The doctor says it'd be all right in the morning. Oh, that's a relief. Who is this? Littlefield, a oh, Warren. Wait, hold on one minute. Okay, go. Littlefield, Warren, Caucasian. Born Portucket, Rhode Island, May 17th, 1939. My Uncle Charlie was born on May 17th. Of course, that was in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, but he was Caucasian. Small world. Simpson, why did you arrest the man? Oh, well, I, I pulled him over for speeding. But there's a warrant out on him for back alimony. You want to call your lawyer? No, I don't want to talk to him. The creep's living with my ex-wife. <laughs> well, maybe they'll get married and then you won't have to pay alimony. I don't pay it now. That's why I'm wearing these handcuffs. <laughs> Come on, Mr. Littlefield. I'll show you to your room. Well, now that you're here, we'll be going, Simpson. Oh, no, please don't leave me here alone. We always end up saying that to him, don't we? <laughs> I need you for my deputies. <laughs> <laughs> deputies, you gotta be kidding. Ah, oh, he's gotta be crazy. <laughs> Look, criminals should be seen and not heard. What criminal? There was no crime leaving that barracuda. <laughs> You made a commitment to that barracuda. You know, marriage is a sacred institution. Sacred? Show me one place in the Bible where it mentions the word alimony. <laughs> the only reason that it is not mentioned in the Bible is because splitting up back there was simple. David got the donkey, Bathsheba got the goat. Now, come on out. Now, please. I need you to be my deputies. Again with the deputies? Uh, Simpson, we're not qualified to be deputies. OK! <laughs> I know you never seen a tough cop beg, but I'm begging you now, now. Don't beg, pal. They're not worth it. Oh, and I guess you think that you men are. Well, I want you to know there are two sides to a divorce. That's right. You know, I was married to a dentist, and I supported that man until he got his degree. Then he put a couple of things out. His shingle and me. I'd like to shake his hand. I'd like to shake your face. Addie, come on. Let's not waste our time on this criminal. No, I need your help, please. Oh, come on, Simpson. We don't know anything about being deputies. No. I don't expect you to be real cops, but if I'm gone, who's gonna be here when that lost little boy like Joey walks through that door crying? You get a lot of little lost little boys in here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> who's gonna buy that little lost boy an ice cream cone? Oh. And who's gonna put the policeman's cap on his cute little head sideways? Who cares? <laughs> the law cares. And so do we. Yeah. Can you make us deputies just like that? Oh, yeah. Hey, there's a law from 1885, but it's still on the books. And the law says, in time of emergency, any marshal, sheriff, or law enforcement officer, huh, can deputize a Glenlawn citizen of which is a two. OK, what do we have to do? Let's do it. Uh, well, first, raise your right hand and repeat after me. Okay. 
I, Nell Hopper, Natty Wilson. I, I Nell Hopper, Nell Natty Hopper. Wilson, yeah. yeah. Do solemnly swear to uphold the laws of the United States of America and Glenn Lorne. Do solemnly swear to uphold the laws of the United States of America and Glen Lawn. You are now deputies of the Glen Lawn Police Department under the Emergency Mobilization Act of 1885. Now I give you a badge, a dollar a day, and enough oats for your horse. Sure, this isn't going to be dangerous or anything. Oh, please, little lost boys and ice cream cones. What could happen? I guess you're right. Congratulations, officers. <sighs> Glenlawn police, shoot out a tenth and elm. Who wants to take it? <laughs> Very much, thank you. Here, uh, Katie, would you foul this baby? Oh, sure. Oh, this is so much fun. Oh, Deputy Harper? What is it, Big Mouth? <laughs> May I uh, make a phone call? I need to call Gloria Steinem. Her dream finally came true. Five women holding one man prisoner. Forget Gloria, darling. It's my dream you should worry about. <laughs> gonna be able to leave here? I mean, I'm getting hungry. Look, I don't care how hungry you are. As long as that vermin isn't here, we're gonna sit here and act just as brave and as fearless as any man. Now turn your face around and smile. Turn it. <laughs> I don't believe this. Uh, you guys, you know Mr. Bradbury who lives across the street? Yeah. yeah. What about him? Look at this. He was arrested for dressing up like Meryl Streep. <laughs> Gee, I wish Simpson would get back from that shootout. Oh, Nell, I forgot to tell you. Simpson called. There was no shootout, just some guy had his TV on too loud. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, did he say anything else? Uh, yeah, he said he was gonna stop somewhere and get a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Of all the nerve, we're around here doing his work, and he's out on a dinner break. It's not fair. It's not fair. Yeah. That's what my wife yelled when the judge said, split it down the middle. You know, you are really paranoid about women. You act like they're all out to get you. Yeah, you get that way when you've been married eight years to Eva Perone. Hello, Glenlawn Police Department. Samantha Kaniski speaking. What? Nell, you better pick up on this. Oh, okay. Officer Harper here, how might I help you? <laughs> oh, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. There is a prowler in the house across the street. Mm-hmm. The address? Mm-hmm. Well, I know that house. Yeah. Thank you, thank you very much. Somebody's robbing my house! <laughs> oh, I wish we could call the police. <laughs> we are the police. <laughs> Now, are you sure it's our house? Yes, that was Mr. Bradbury who was calling. He goes across the street. Isn't that the guy who dresses up like Meryl Streep? Yes, and he said he would go over and check it out, but he doesn't have a thing to wear. <laughs> no, I mean, Simpson isn't here. What are we supposed to do? Oh, you'll do what any woman would do in a case like this. Get hysterical. You think just because we're women, we're gonna get hysterical? Well, you're wrong. We're not gonna get hysterical. In fact, I'm glad there's a prowler out there because I can handle it. So can my partner, too, too, Hagney Hagman and Lacey are women, and they round up criminals all the time. Yeah, after they spent two hours in makeup getting their hair done. I don't want to go over there now. Why? Your hair looks beautiful. <laughs> And besides, it's my house. That's what my wife said. Nell, do we have to go? I think Simpson is not here. Look, remember, we'll be like Cagney and Lacey. You're a lot closer to Laurel and Hardy. <laughs> lordy, 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 don't let me hurt this man. <laughs> Smile at him. 
I tell you what, I'll lay it ten to one you don't go. <laughs> I don't want to take your money. <laughs> I've heard women say that before, too. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Since uh, you're going to go out there and do a man's job, before you go, would you do women's work and find me something to eat? Oh, boy. <laughs> Warren, Warren, I just loves doing women's work. Get me that sandwich. It's only a half because the chief ate the other half, but it's peanut butter and jelly, and it is tasty. Oh, thanks. The first decent thing a woman's ever done for me. Bon appetit. I guess I want you to call the hospital as soon as you hear him girl. <laughs> no, this is not the smartest thing we've ever done. I know, but you know. Maybe there's nobody in there. Oh, you mean like a false alarm? Yeah. I'm still not going in. Come on, Addie, you took an oath. Oh, don't give me that. I haven't even gotten the oats for my horse yet. <laughs> we are doing this for the women of America. What have they ever done for me? I am going to hurt you, Addie. All right, we'll go in and get it over with. Now, not through the front door. Why not? Because if there is a prowler in there, he might come out of the front door. Good thinking. We should go around to the back door. Okay. No, 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 no. We cannot go through the back door. Why not? Because if there's a prowler in there, he might come out of the back door. <laughs> we use the side door. It's always locked, and nobody uses it. Okay. Let's go. Anybody. Like I said, maybe there's nobody in there. <gasps> Just a false alarm. Oh, God, honey, what a relief. <sighs> <laughs> was that your light? No, I was hoping it was yours. It was my <laughs> I'm scared. Shh. Now, shh. We gotta stay calm. Look, I have been living with a chief of police for the past 12 years and some of his police know-how has rubbed off on me. So what do we do? You go in there and you talk to that prowler. <laughs> you have to go in and talk to him. Well, you're the smart one. You're the one with the college education. Well, you're the one that's been living with a police chief for 12 yeah, years. Yeah, we don't talk about his work when he comes home. Now you just said... I don't care what I just said. <laughs> now, we could be facing a dangerous criminal. You get yourself together and act like a cop. <laughs> the key to the door right here in my purse. Oh. I left my purse, didn't I? Yes. OK. This is my new plan. We can go around here and go through the front door, then we can open this door. Come on, okay, let's go. <laughs> what? You almost stepped in my geraniums. <laughs> Mel, there may be a prowler in the house. I mean, any minute, we could be fighting for our lives, and all you're worried about these geraniums? When did you plant those geraniums? <laughs> oh, I came in the last year when my petunias died. Oh, yeah. Something about the pH in the soil. No, no, no. Remember. That was these chinch bugs. Anyway, when the petunias died, I said, hey, Neil, what if it's a geranium? You beautiful? know, they look beautiful. Yes, yes. In fact, I like these better than the petunias, because, you know, Addy, the coloring Addy, is... Addy, <laughs> New plan. OK. I'm going to go around right here to the front door. You stay here. I'll come around and let you in that door. Why don't I just come with you? Because I don't want to talk to you no more. Now, stay. <laughs>
know that side door that's always locked? Yeah. It wasn't. <laughs> oh. He's outside now. <gasps> now he's upstairs. Oh, come on. Eddie can't crawl that fast. There's two of them. We're outnumbered. Don't be stupid. There's two of us. I'm not leaving. Listen, you got a choice. Now listen, deputy. You can face them or you can face me. I'll face them. You're a smart girl. Now you get out there and you get that one and I'll go upstairs uh, and get uh, this one. Anel? What, Addie? What if I run into him outside? Then you get on your horse and you ride like heck. <laughs> woman thought you were a burglar. Addie, no. Well, what are you doing here? I thought you were seeing Telly Savalas. Well, see, everybody at the down at the police department came down with food poisoning. Well, how so, about Carl? Oh, he's in the hospital, but he'll be home in the morning. Anyway, see, then Simpson said he was going to make us deputies. Yeah, then somebody called the police station and said there was a prowler in the house. Yeah. What prowler? That was me. A fuse blew, and I've been looking all over for the fuse box. <laughs> Come on, Joey. Let's you and I go upstairs and finish our game of checkers. Okay, Grandpa. Well, we solved that first case, didn't we, Cagney? <laughs> right, Lacey. <laughs> you know, we better than Cagney and Lacey. Yeah, honey. We bad. <laughs> 